Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. And welcome to this learning experience brought to you by Nutanix. My name is Cody and welcome back to Tech Strong Learning. We've got an exciting presentation ahead, but first I do have just a couple of housekeeping notes I'd like to review. First of all, we are recording today's session. So if you have to leave early, if you miss any of our program, uh, if you'd like to rewatch, or of course, if you'd like to share with your team, you will be receiving an email with a link to access the recording on demand. And that'll be in your inbox shortly after we conclude this live session today. If you'd like to engage with us, there are a couple of ways to do so. The first and the easiest option is the chat tab on the right side of your screen. So I'm seeing South Dakota, San Jose, DFW, Virginia, Vegas. We've got people from all over the US. I know we've got global presence as well. Um, so feel free to let us know where you are joining us from here in the chat. Now, if you do have any specific questions you'd like to direct to us today, please send your questions to the Q&A tab. We've got some time set aside here at the end of our, of our session today, so we'll be answering as many of these questions as we can. So be sure to send them in early as soon as you have them. Now, jumping over to that handout section, you'll see there are three resources as well as the slides available for download. So feel free to grab those. And before we close things out today, I will be giving away four $25 Amazon gift cards. So be sure to stick around until the very end to see if you're one of our lucky winners. So our topic today is AI ready infrastructure, how platform engineers can achieve scalability, security and control from edge to cloud. And I'm joined today by Harsha Kotekela, uh, Director of Products and Solutions at Nutanix. So Harsha, thank you so much for joining us today on Tech Strong Learning. Would you like to go ahead and take it from here? Thanks, Cody. I'm super excited to be here. And, you know, by the way, as you're saying from participants from everywhere, I see some participants from Spain and Netherlands too. That's, that's amazing. That's awesome. Um, and obviously it's a topic that everybody's interested in right now, right? Like, you know, how do we build AI models and, uh, you know, everybody's learning about it. Um, so, and this is what, you know, this is what's exciting to talk about, right? Like, you know, how can we, as Nutanix side, we can support, build that, help our audience in building that, you know, AI models that they're looking for. And, uh, you know, how can we support them with, by, providing the best infrastructure possible for that, right? Um, so hello everybody and uh, welcome to the session. So today I was thinking the way I would cover the, you know, this topic is, I know many of you might not be familiar with Nutanix. So the first few slides you will see is, you know, just basic introduction of who we are as Nutanix, right? What's our vision is, what do we, what do we, what problems do we solve? and have a basic introduction so that everybody's on the same page on understanding of Nutanix. And then I will go into details on what do we offer from for AI perspective. So, you know, what I'm hearing from various customers that we were talking about uh, and, you know, how, what are some challenges that they're, they're facing when they want to implement AI models. And from an infrastructure perspective, how is Nutanix supporting them and helping them? as they build their own, uh, you know, trained AI models in there for their enterprises. So that's how I'm going to cover it uh, in our presentation. So starting off with, you know, I want to um, talk about, you know, just a basic little bit introduction on who we stand for, like what's Nutanix about. So Nutanix is about making a hybrid multi-cloud uh, environment simple and cost effective. So what do we mean by that? Right. So if you consider from an inf infrastructure perspective, uh, many of your platform engineers, so your, your charter is to build the best infrastructure for, you know, for your stakeholders, right? So you can get that innovation, speed the velocity of in innovation into the market. So for environments that have hybrid multi-cloud environments, we make that simple and cost effective. So on one side, you have different wor workloads, right? Like, you know, maybe you have, apps, cloud native apps, as well as ERP systems and ES systems, right? Different things, different workloads and also databases, right? So you have workloads and the, on the other hand, 
you have edge locations and you have your data centers and also cloud. So Nutanix basically helps you use these workloads, have, have these workloads across seamlessly manage across your infrastructure platform, right? So it provides in simple terms, when you have silos of you know, edge data center and cloud, Nutanix provides a single management plane that helps you manage these workloads across this uh, different environments, right? So that's what Nutanix is about, and that's what Vision is about. So in the next slide, I'm going to go a little bit deeper into, okay, you know, at a high level vision and mission, I explained to you what problem is Nutanix solving. So I'm going to, you know, that's a big problem. Obviously, we, we know that, right? Especially as you, you know, as platform engineers, you know what it entails to build up to it. So I'm going to, you know, jump into this, the next slide, which is a little bit more detailed. So brace for it. Um, but I'm going to start building out, like, you know, what are the things that are required for building this environment that I'm talking about. So let me first get your attention to the bottom left-hand side, uh, where we say cloud infrastructure. So as a platform engineers or IT infrastructure teams, the first thing that you think about is how can I build the best infrastructure needed for my workloads? Or it could be AI workloads since this is a topic, but any modern apps workloads, right? Like, you know, you have containerization and you want to use different Kubernetes distributions. And AI is also, you know, it's a workload, right? It's a modern app workload that you're using. So how can I best build the best infrastructure stack for it? And the second thing is that you think about is, you know, when you're thinking about AI, especially, you're building, say sometimes in, you know, you're ingesting data to actually training your model. And sometimes in many cases, actually enterprises, they're using your foundational models that are already available outside as open source, and you're training them using your own enterprise data, right? So sometimes in those cases where you need that flexibility and high compute, GPU compute, there might be cases where you want to do that on the cloud, right, in, in case, or you know, if you want to keep your data proprietary, you might want to do it in your data, own data center, right? So there are many cases, but if you want to connect to the public cloud, that's another aspect that you're looking for. You have your data center, make sure that's the best infrastructure that you have to support the your modern apps, including AI, and you want to connect, you know, in cases to the cloud too. That's something that you're thinking. On top of it, as platform engineers, you're also thinking about your stakeholders, especially developers. You're thinking about what kind of services that they need. Developers, they need in, in order to, your DevOps teams, in order to increase the pace of your development, you want self-service provisioning. You might want to do provisioning of storage through code, right? And you can do provisioning of infrastructure through code, right? All these capabilities that you might, meet, might need for your, for your developers. So that's another, another aspect that you might be thinking about. And on top of it, you want to, you know, while all this is going on, you still want to make sure that there's room for governance and policy management according to what your company profile is, as well as to maintain compliance requirements, especially for regulatory industries, right? So the high level for, as platform engineers, these are the things, typical challenges, these are the typical things that you're looking for. So that's how, from a customer point of view, from your point of view, that's how Nutanix is structured, right, in our solutions that we provide. So on the bottom left corner, as I mentioned, is the cloud infrastructure that we provide um, and the tools that you need to build the best infrastructure needed. And in extension to that, we have an extension that can help you connect that infrastructure to your existing cloud accounts. So including building your you know, you know, private networks with your existing cloud accounts. So we have a bridge to your public cloud. On top of it, we think about what are the data services that you needed. So Nutanix also offers one unified platform for, you know, for, for taking care of both files and object storage. Right? So in many cases, especially for AI, you need different kind of storage buckets, right? So different protocols. So Nutanix helps you have a unified center to take care of both files and objects, and also data services for Kubernetes. 
in case you're planning to use different Kubernetes uh, um, containerization of apps instead of VMs, we provide data services for Kubernetes. Of course, we also provide data services for VMs, but there's something new where data services by Kubernetes um, is something new because those are the modern applications. So we also provide the data services for Kubernetes. And database service and platform service also that's coming up. So these are the services that we provide to help increase the pace of your innovation, right? For to get that code out, to build that, to do to do have those automatic build systems to able to you know check in your code, uh, automatically do your query testing, and once it's done, to move that code to production. So to uh, enable that process and increase the velocity of that, we provide that services in the middle layer. That's the thing that I was talking about. And on top of it, we call something called the unified control plane. This is essentially for you know platform engineers who are also play the role of admins, right? uh, administrators who want to make sure that whatever DevOps team is doing, or developers or engineering team is doing, you know, is according to the policy or are within the policy of uh, of your company, of your enterprise, right? So you might want to have, you know, lifecycle management or identity and access management, right? All those accesses, you know, those are the administrative tools that we also provide. And also for your data governance, where the data is flowing, uh, and you want to restrict data access to it, some of the cases, and also how do you manage both your uh, cloud infrastructure as well as your data center, right? So these are the tools that are required for usually day one, day two operations. So those are the things that we provide a tool set to help you with unified control plan. So overall, right, I know it's a, it's a lot, but I wanted to cover, you know, different aspects that Nutanix provides on you know to help the uh, to make platform engineers life easy right because ask you you know thinking about in your shoes these are the different challenges that you're thinking about when you build that technology stack for an ai workload so I, i've already covered that right like you know as in what is the infrastructure and then there's few few key things typically customers are doing right uh, different organizations are doing Either you're on modernizing infrastructure, right? Or you might be doing is, you know, you want to extend what infrastructure that you have from edge to the cloud. You want to have, you know, instead of like three silos, especially this is very, becomes very critical for AI applications. In case you want to have an untethered AI application running on the edge using the data, right? This becomes especially important, you know, some of the industries that I've been talking about is, manufacturing industry um, or you know even uh, automotive industries where they have a lot of manufacturing plants and they want to have ai for quality control on the edge locations right on their manufacturing flights so you want something that your model could run on those edge locations untethered untethered right because you know sometimes you might want not want to be connected to the cloud or even your main office so you need a platform that's easily be able to manage on on the edge, as well as we have the provide the same kind of performance to manage your AI workload there. And finally, is you might be doing modernizing your applications. So in case you have monolithic applications right now, and then you want to change it to a services based applications, um, and you want to use cloud native features for it, right? So. These are the modern applications that you might be doing. So any of these scenarios that you want to, um, uh, that's your priority, then Nutanix can help you with our platform, right? As I mentioned before, we have a full scale platform that helps you any of this um, uh, initiatives that you're working on. So how does it help with AI, right? Um, so, for AI, in, in AI scenarios, before I jump into what is the Nutanix value for AI, let's think about let's take a, uh, think about the big picture of what's involved in AI. In AI, first step is you have to um, bring the data that you have, right? In some cases, maybe you have to clean up the data that you have so that when you train the model that you, for your AI model, you provide valid relevant data. So, and then once you have that, you have to ingest the data, 
once you ingest the data. Second thing is, in some cases, you know, you uh, have you you're going to use foundational large language models that you know that are available out there as open source, and using your data, you can train that model that's so that it becomes relevant for your organization, right? And I, what if when I'm talking to customers, in many cases, it's almost that they won't be building their own LLM foundational model because that's a huge endeavor, as you know, and that takes a lot of GPU compute power and a lot of resources to actually build it. So people are, are using, you know, things like, you know, for instance, open source model from, you know, from, from Meta or even open source models based upon licensing on hugging phase, downloading those models and ingesting the data that you want to train it on and basically personalize that model for your organization or for your need, whatever you need for it. So that's another aspect. And once you train it, you have to validate that, make sure that it is providing current, you know, correct information, current results. And, and, you know, it is inferencing and like providing the correct results that you're doing. So at a high level, these are the steps that you need uh, to do when you're training an AI model, right? So within this case, so something that you need is first is we want to make sure that we have a simplified operations. So as I mentioned before in the previous platform, right, the New Times platform, we want to simplify your operations for your developers and your data scientists um, so that they have self self-service provisioning, right? When they want to do you know provision infrastructure through code or they want to provision right say replication or for their applications, they're able to do it through code, right? So we simplify those operations and make it easy for you. The second thing is enterprise data services. This is something that's also needed very much for AI models, right? Like what are the different data services that enterprises need for different teams? So these are the data services that we provide. And the third thing becomes very relevant, especially for AI is lower TCO. The reason this becomes really important is as, a, as an example, recently I was talking to a customer and they use public cloud to train their model and just for two days of usage of public cloud, it costed them about 150 grand, right? 150 thousand dollars just to use it. And the customer was saying, "I can't go back to my my manager and ask for another million dollars just to train the model, right?" So uh, it becomes super expensive when you use the nodes for 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 uh, uh, for public cloud in some cases for training your training your models and stuff your own nodes and your data center. So TCO is also becoming very important um, as you think about, you know, how do I create an AI workload and where do I manage it? So by the way, as we go through this presentation, you know, there's a Q&A section as Cody was saying, feel free to put in your questions there um, so I can cover it as we go through, go through this presentation. I like to keep it as engaging as possible. I know it's a webinar, but you know, this is a new and upcoming industry. And, you know, we're learning a lot from this. It's evolving too. So if there's any questions, please feel free to, you know, as and when you have any questions, feel free to use the Q&A function. And then we'll, uh, I'll try to cover it as I go through the presentation. Um, and then, so now after this, so what are some, um use cases that we're thinking about right uh, that are some companies are thinking about like any innovation you know the first use cases are all, all the simple use cases that people are thinking about right like the customer service is the predominant first use case that i'm seeing in various industries um, essentially customer service is a very high um, turnover function in in organizations so it takes a lot of time with that turnover to new to train the new customer service reps uh, on what are the different offers that the company provides, uh, so that takes a lot of time. And the second thing is not only just turnover, but organizations, as we know, right? Like for instance, B two C organizations, they put out different offers for different folks for every time, right? Like you know, if, you, if we buy a phone, for instance, Verizon puts out different offers every time, right? So that takes a lot of time out of customer service reps to get them 
uh, uh, enabled uh, and trained in the offers that they're providing. So this is the first use case that I've seen that to reduce the training time required for customer reps and to reduce the time, like, you know, the research and that they need to learn on what are the different offers, what are they doing, right? So this is where I'm seeing, we're seeing a lot of uh, organizations starting off with customer service. And the second thing, recently I was in a meeting with the university, actually. Um, this university is, a, it, you know, it's a, it, it, it's a, it has a large uh, research and development function, right? Uh, they, lo- they do a lot of research in genomics and all that. So they have high performance computing requirements and they're using Nutanix platform for it, right? To provide basically build models to help study their, we call it like genomics, right? Like all the genomics data and come up with you know, faster analysis of that research. So this is something that we're seeing as well as some use cases that are being developed. And also organizations from a legal perspective, they also uh, there's another customer that I've, uh, I've heard of, uh, of is they have a lot of legal contracts with various companies. So they're adjusting the data to find out is which contract is coming to an expiration date and when is it coming to an expiration or if they have any questions on if this contract has any uh, provision in it right any of these questions so they're working on that model our organizations are working on that model so these are some typical use cases um, that are that i see in the market and by the way if you are using any uh, building any models in your organizations, feel free to put in the chat, like something to learn about and, and to see, uh, you know, what are some use cases that you're building in your in your companies, right? So these are some things that we see. So as we, as people are building these different organizations, what are we hearing from them? Like, you know, what are the some challenges that they're facing? First and foremost is there's something new, right? The IML. You know, I know it's been there for a long time as a concept. You know, when the time when I was going to college, we had neural networks. I studied neural networks, but it was more of a uh, concept on how things work. But we didn't have enough technology power, right? Like we didn't have powerful compute. We didn't have powerful networking to make it really happen. Um, if we had only high performance computers, but they were used for big, large government projects but not as widespread as we have right now, right? So uh, something that has actually become really popular in the last you know, last one year or seven, eight months since ChatGPT came out, it really became uh, um, used by, and once the models, foundational models have been released and open source, it, it, it has become even more widespread. So because of that, there's many, uh, um, organizations still trying to figure out how to start like you know what is the infrastructure that i can build to support these models and from a developer's perspective they're thinking about you know how do i train the model that you know from a foundational model how do i ingest data into this foundational model right so there's a lot of questions on where do i start the second the questions concerns they have is about the company ip and data privacy this is a big question because this is a big concern, huge concern because on one hand, right, cloud, public cloud is offering a lot of services to uh, to help with your training, your foundational, mo- training a foundational model to meet the needs of your organization. But that means that your data might, you know, might be have to be shared with, with, uh, with, uh, with, different, with different companies out there. And also there's a huge concern that if a data is leaked, your organization proprietary data is leaked, it might become part of the foundational learning of the foundational model, right? Basically you're losing your company secrets and your company proprietary information. So people are really concerned about it, right? So on how to build that, you know, use that existing model, but keep the proprietary information still secure in your organization but have the advantages of, um, uh, you know, how of that of that productivity gains through AI. Right? So that's the second concern, we, you know, that we hear about. And the third thing is they need help with successfully running the solution, right? Like, you know, how do we successfully run it so that it's 
so that it is orchestrated well from uh, you know a stitched up solution together that can be uh, already pre-validated and, and the solution that fits the performance requirements for AI model. Right. So these are the things that typically the challenges that that we're seeing in the organizations. Um, I see a question here in, in the participant, why is having AI ready infrastructure essential for organization today and how does it impact their scalability, security and control? I think I, I, I covered a little bit of aspect here. The reason it's essential, I mean, obviously the AI ready infrastructure, the reason is because um, typically organizations right now have the infrastructure layer is based for when you know you have a three-tier architecture, right? Most of the organizations have SAN network where you have storage and compute and networking separate. Because of these, uh, this architecture was built at a time that was created at the time where the networking and the technology was not as fast-paced as it is right now, right? So you needed to have a combination of compute together, compute service together a combination of storage service together uh, to, to also get that uh, redundancy requirement from, from storage perspective. But with the newer technology that we have, especially with uh, you know all the GPU, powerful GPUs that we already have available, and also those, that makes compute easier, and also powerful networking that we have, that architecture was built earlier, is not as suitable for the new business requirements that we have. Right, so it's very important that you know you have you pick the right platform for for your modern workloads. That's one aspect. The second aspect is you already have as typical organizations you have a hybrid multi cloud environment. You know where you have edge, you have data center, and you also have a cloud presence. And the reason, I mean, you have that for good reason because you you know you have your you know, branch offices or remote offices, which are generating data, or you have your manufacturing shops, which are generating data and need to run that assembly line, for instance, right? Like they need to have some kind of functionality at the end and they're generating a lot of data. And you have your core data center as well, right? Which has a lot of your business critical applications sitting on it. And then, you know, for your future applications or for, for instance, cases where you need to do uh, disaster recovery or backup, or for instance, maybe uh, um, for a sudden spike of compute resources, if you need that flexibility, you have cloud as well, right? So if you have three silos and where data is spread out across these three silos, you won't be able to have, a, you won't be able to build an intelligent AI model if data is sitting across these three silos, right? So you need some a platform that can connect the data across these three platforms, right, across these three silos, so you can build an AI model that is very intelligent and works for your organization. So, and so you need an infrastructure, so that's why infrastructure typically becomes really important when thinking about, you know, AI, uh, AI perspective, right? Um, obviously, you know, from a foundational model perspective, right, you know, you have, uh, um, open source foundational models available, which you can download it, right? But if you want to train it and personalize it for your organization, you need a strong, robust, high performance uh, infrastructure to support the training of your foundational model to suit your needs. Um, another question is like, you know, how does Nutanix help with ensuring data privacy? This is super important. This is very important because, you know, with Nutanix solutions, Nutanix is offering a, a software solution that helps you uh, 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 basically cloud platform and you manage it, right? You manage your new data, own data center. So we're providing cloud native abilities for your data center. So you'll have a cloud-like environment. So basically getting the best of both worlds, right? Like the best of why people like cloud because it, you can tailor size the compute that you need you have a lot of uh, services available on the cloud. You can tailor size your stories that you need, but obviously if you use it, it comes with a higher cost because it's a service that they provide. But if you build your own data center, you might be missing out that the cloud-like service aspect that you have, right? So that's what 
Nutanix enables to you without Nutanix Cloud Platform. So this is something that would be super helpful for, especially you know, in this slide when you're talking about IP and data privacy, there are many organizations, they want to have, keep their data in control and in their own data center, right? And whereas they're missing out on the services that cloud provides to train the model. And that's what Nutanix helps you with uh, in providing that infrastructure that helps you with uh, build, you know, training your model. So I think we covered, we're, we, I, I talked about this, right? The next thing is, you know, if you want, uh, uh, if you have data across edge, on-prem and a data center, you need something that connects all of this, right? Um, and Nutanix that helps that platform connects all this across uh, um, wherever you have your data in the apps. And it provides that single plane of management plane that can help you move your data and workloads wherever you need. And also it helps you on the edge as well because it can run untethered, right? And, uh, uh, and on edge locations, if you need to um, run with just some minimal three node cluster, Nutanix enables you to run with it, right? Uh, you don't need a large SAN presence in, on the edge locations, right? If you have SAN, you know, it's, it's a little bit of an overkill uh, for every edge location, right? But Nutanix with its hyper-converged infrastructure, it helps with uh, running on the, and its platform allows you to run on the edge location as well. Um, so with all the said, like, okay, now bringing it all together, what do we offer, right? Like there's, I talked about the whole uh, platform for of what two tanks provide, but we're building a stit solution for you, right? It, it, it's something basically Nutanix provides uh, a, something called Nutanix GPT in a box solution. It's essentially a, um, a, a turnkey AI solution that you can use it anywhere to, to where you can take a, a foundational model and train it for you. So what do what do you need for it, right? Like what, what do you need for it is let me uh, uh, draw your attention on the reluctant side. So all the purple aspects, the purple boxes that you see, this is the foundation, the infrastructure foundation that is prepackaged together for you to build the AI models. That's what Nutanix provides. In addition to that, when you want to ingest data and train a foundational model. You might be needing PyTorch or Kubeflow, right? For the, or for ML operations, to ML ML ops. So these are also pre-validated for you. And from Nutanix Marketplace, you can download this whole package that is pre-validated and packaged together. Uh, and you know you can train your foundational models on top of it. So we call it the opinionated AI stack because we did a study on what is widely used by different enterprise organizations in order to train their in order to train this foundational models for for their own data and this is what we figured is the best stack that they need to train their foundational models so foundational models is something um, that you could be able, you are able to download it uh, you know wherever you want it's a different licensing model so depends upon your organization needs and some of the foundational models are also a little bit pre-trained for some um, purpose-driven, right? So there's some purpose-driven foundational models that you can download. So this is left open for your choice on what are foundational models that you can use. And, um, you know, and we provide the infrastructure stack packaged together that can work for that foundational model. Uh, so this framework is already built for you that you can use. Uh, and it's, it's available on our Nutanix um, and Nutanix marketplace. Right? And not only that is actually um, validated by the A NVIDIA chipset as well. So our HV solution is validated by uh, NVIDIA Enterprise 4.0 version. So you know that it works and it provides you that performance that you need uh, for your for tra training your AI models, right? So many of the organizations that we've been seeing is they're taking a foundational model, right? They're not building their foundational model because, as I said, that's a huge endeavor. Um, and uh, so they're taking a foundation model on their data center. They're getting their organization data, and then having an infrastructure 
running and training their that foundational model with ingesting that organizational data, right? And so Nutanix GPT in the box is, the, is a pre-stit solution to help you exactly do that. Um, and it's also been certified by NVIDIA GPU set. So you know that it, it, it provides you that performance. Um, this is a different stack. It's just I wanted to show you, you know, three different stacks that uh, uh, that you can build out. I mean, essentially they're the same in case. Um, Hugging Face is one site where, uh, you know, you can download a lot of, you know, open sourced uh, um, foundational models, right? You have, you can also go to Meta directly and download Llama, for instance, right? But Hugging Face also, you have very purpose-driven foundational models available. So in case you want to try it out, right, you can, you know, download the foundational models from it. And then you can use our infrastructure stack to help you train that foundational model that you develop and you can build your own trained model, pre-trained model for, for your organization, right? Or you can use the NVIDIA existing you know, AI enterprise stack that also works with, with Nutanix. So respect of where you want to go, like, you know, what do you want to do? We, we're building this validated solution for you um, that you can build your, uh, build your AI model. So I think that's, that's what uh, that brings me to a close right now. Let me see if uh, um, uh, any questions. But I hope uh, it was a, a it was a great you know helpful session on how Nutanix can help you uh, in in your AI journey, right? Um, and something as platform engineers, when you think about what are the stack that I need to build for my organization. You know who's going into you know want to create AI workloads. I hope this gives you uh, you know this you know pre-built stack that they can use it you know uh, as a turnkey solution for yourself and for your organization. And keeping in mind right, providing the simplicity as well as security for your IP and information. All right, Harsha. Well, thank you so much. Um, I'm looking at our questions right now, um, and it looks like we've got a couple still coming in. So let's just start tackling from the top. Um, so this first question is um, security related, but does Nutanix get access to my cloud infrastructure if it will manage it? And um, does it also get the private access keys? Uh, no, it, we, yeah, no, <laughs> of course not. No, of course not. So Nutanix is is you manage it, Nutanix, right? Like it's it's a software that you subscribe and you manage it. Uh, if you want to, these are your private keys. You save it. We don't have any access to those private keys. Um, it gives you the flexibility of you know putting the uh, uh, you know using your existing virtual private network in case you already created it. And if you already have a cloud account, we provide the ability as you know. Uh, to use our software to uh, um, to uh, manage your cloud as well, but Nutanix doesn't get access to. It. I think there's a difference between this confusion between a, a software as a service, right, in the cloud versus Nutanix cloud platform, right. This aspect of security is not where we are hosting in our on our cloud, so there is no way we can get access to it, right. It is yours, you know, you're basically getting a subscription license of our platform, and then it's on your data center, it just helps you manage your data center. Um, so it, all the information is private to you and you know you take care of it. Thank you, Harsha. Um, is there a sandbox built to experiment my model on your platform? Uh, that's a great question. So we do have something called you know, Nutanix test drive. Um, we don't, we're still building out the sandbox for specifically with this package that I showed, the GPT uh, sandbox that I've showed you. But we do have, um, you know, Nutanix test drive. It's called Nutanix.com forward slash one platform, right? You can, you can just search it uh, on Google. And it gives you, it's our sandbox. You don't need to install anything. If you just give an email, we'll provision an instance for you so that you can go to the storyline. And uh, essentially, it shows you, you know, how do you manage these modern applications, right? The reason I keep saying modern applications because yes, AI is a modern application. AI is 
is getting a lot of attention, but it's essentially another workload, right? It's, uh, um, you know, it's, it's a modern application, it's a new workload. So you'll see, you know, what kind of platform capabilities that we have for managing this new workload. All right, so Harsha, let's say I do go on to your um, your sandbox, and um, there, there's a lot of stuff I could do there. What are some typical use cases that um, some of our attendees could could play with in the sandbox environment? Um, from a use case perspective, I mean these are use cases that our attendees need to build out, right? Uh, you know, if uh, some typical use cases that I you know I'm seeing when I talk to different customers are. One of the use cases recently is for university, right? They have a high performance computing center for their um, for their medical department, right? For where they study different genomics and all that. Um, so they using this AI platform for the faster research and and uh, uh, you know providing that much more faster inputs and research, you know, improving their innovation speed. So that's what um, they're using it for. Um, so th that's one use case. Another use case that I've seen is basically a legal department. There's tons of contracts. A big, large organization will have right with different companies. If they have any question on that legal, right, it takes a lot of time to actually for the legal department, and it's a huge legal department. That's how you know. So they're using this AI model to uh, augment their you know AI legal staff for any research questions into into their contracts. Right. So, so that's something that. Uh, they're using uh, and yeah I hope that answer question I, I saw another question about sage maker so I wanted to address that as well but I hope that answers the question so uh, about um, Amazon sage maker so what we provide is yeah Amazon sage maker it's a great tool right if you use the public cloud but but there are few things that if we, if you use uh, that tool there are some restrictions right as one is the question about you know your privacy and security, right? Like that's one aspect is top of mind for many of the organization is, look, I want to use this productivity gains that the AI gives me, right? Like for instance, I have a you know HR department in, internally asking you know many people are asking these questions on what is the policy on my vacation, right? Or what's the policy on I don't know paternity leave, for example, right? So it takes some time for somebody to go in and study what's a policy and then give response to that and create a website for it. But if there's a chatbot for internal chatbot, right, which is backed by AI, that becomes very easy for employees to ask different questions which are policy based, right? But at the same time, those kind of policies, you don't want to expose it to, you know, the main foundational model as part of the main foundational model, right? These are very, uh, um, this is when you use security. Another aspect is, for instance, there are companies like, you know, say Walmart or any retail organizations, right? They don't want to have their competitive data in, in a public cloud space, right? So there's reasons for competitive reasons. There are reasons because of proprietary information, there's reasons, compliance information. That's why you, big aspect where, um, you know, you want to keep the data on your data center and then you want to train that model on your data center, right? So that's one thing. The second thing is, uh, another important aspect is, um, what about if you want to run your model untethered on an edge location, right? So many of the cloud solutions, for solutions provided by public cloud, they cannot run untethered, right? That's, that's a limitation. It has to come back to the public cloud. So, if you want to run your SMD line, right, 24 seven, that typically that's how it's in manufacturing, right? You want to have this AI model. If you have, for instance, quality control AI model that you, you know, that visually inspects, um, visually inspects like, you know, for quality control, right? Those kind of things need to run by itself, right? Like, so Nutanix helps with that, right? Uh, building that hybrid multi-cloud, connecting the dots across, right? That's another thing. And finally is the TCO. Whereas I, one of the examples I gave you is a customer of us, they used, you know, we're in, we're in public cloud, they used the public cloud to train a model uh, for a few days, right? And it cost them 150,000, right? And he, he was actually joking with me that I don't want to go back to my boss, ask for another million dollar budget, right? So, so it needs to be a, a balance, right? There's a place for public cloud and, you know, there's a place where you want to use, um, you know, on-prem, 
right? So there's place for each for good reason. So you need something that connects with them both. And based upon your organization requirements, you have the flexibility of what you want to use, what's best for you. And that's what Nutai is provide. Well, all right, Harsha, that was an, an excellent summary right there of, of Nutanix. And um, we, we are actually out of questions at this point. So I did want to uh, give you the opportunity to give us any final words or if you have any closing remarks before I give away a couple of gift cards and take us off the air. <laughs> yeah, good. Thank you. I think this is, uh, um, I know a lot of platform engineers, you know, is, is uh, are on this audience. So take a look at our, our sandbox, as I've said, newtimes.com forward slash one platform. Um, and it's actually a pre stitched solution. And, I, you know, I was a developer before, right? It's platform engineers. You're thinking about your stakeholders. How can I bring, build the best stack together, right? And that's what you know we provide, and it's very seamless as well. So uh, many people are asking, like, oh, where do I get started? Like, you know, how many vendors do I have? Like, you know, how do I stitch the solutions? There's so many moving parts. So that's the hard work that we've done for you, and that we're providing. Uh, so take a look at it and see how it works. Awesome. Um, Harsha, it looks like um, someone has asked the, the best way to contact you. Um, so um, would you mind sharing your LinkedIn in the chat while I while I close this out? Um, Harsha Kotikala, but I think it, my LinkedIn is Harsha2728. I think linkedin.com uh, forward slash dot in and um, Harsha2728. Um, but yeah, just search for with my name, Harsha Kotikala. You should find me on LinkedIn. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much for, for offering that. Um, so I would like to remind our audience today that we have recorded our session. If you happen to miss any of it, rest assured you will be receiving an email with a link to access the recording. Uh, we'll be sending that out shortly, so, so hold tight. Um, if you would all... Or, Rather, you can also find it living on the DevOps website. Just visit devops.com slash webinars and look in the on-demand section. So I did mention we had some gift cards to give out. So our four winners of our $25 Amazon gift card drawing are Igor P, Leah R, Denise D, and Julia C. So congratulations to our four winners. I'll be reaching out to you soon to distribute these gift cards. If you don't happen to see an email from me, check your spam folder just in case it happens to be filtered out. I'd like to thank Nutanix for sponsoring our program today. And to our audience, thank you so much for being here with us these last 50 minutes. Uh, we really appreciate your time. And if you look at the chat, you'll notice there is a message pinned at the top that will take you to our survey. Um, if you also just wait until we, we take this off air, you will be funneled to our survey. And we would love to hear your feedback, whether it's about today's program or future topic recommendations. Just let us know there. Either way, we hope to see everyone at a future Tech Strong Learning experience. Have a great rest of your day, and you may now disconnect everyone. Harsha, thank you so much. And um, I'll leave the room open for just a moment uh, so people can grab that LinkedIn link. Thank you, Cody. Thank you, everyone. All right. Bye, everyone.